Welcome back to the Catholic Drive Time Show. This is your host, Adrian Fonseca. It's so good to be on with you today. Praise be to God. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Barbie movie. Have you seen ads for that? <sighs> I wouldn't. I would be surprised if you have not seen ads for that. For some reason, they are really are they really pushing this movie? Are they pink? Uh, maybe they're. Are Did they you know blue? Barbie was pink? I didn't know that. <laughs> what? Literally? I didn't know pink. No, I'm just kidding. Of course <laughs> I knew that. How could you not know that? There's like no. I thought you meant like everywhere. literally like solid pink. Oh no, no. Oh. Yeah, but it's crazy. There's Barbie ads absolutely everywhere on YouTube and billboards on every social media app you go to. It's it's crazy. Barbie, yeah, Barbie, say, Barbie. You know, it's some some meme pages on Facebook. They're all talking about oh, me and the boys. We're gonna go see Oppenheimer and Barbie at the same time. It's gonna be great. <laughs> yeah, they're calling I it. I can't like, wait uh, to go see Barbie. Barbieheimer or something like that. I think it's they called it. Yeah. And uh, but this is this is very concerning actually. Because it's it's kind of strange how much publicity this Barbie movie is getting. They are pushing this movie hard. And so immediately I'm thinking, oh, why are they pushing this movie so hard? Like, what about this movie is something that they really, really want you to see? So I started looking into it and I started watching some people who have already seen the, the pre-screenings of it. And it is very concerning. It turns out the Barbie movie is not good. So the long story short, if you just want the the five second review, don't take your daughters. And if you want to know why, stay tuned because I'm going to tell you. And according to there's this uh, Protestant, which this is another sad thing. There's not a lot of good Catholic movie reviews out there. But here's from a this Protestant movie reviewer who came out and said the new Barbie movie forgets its core audience of families and children while catering to nostalgic adults and pushing lesbian gay, bisexual, and transgender character stories. However, early screenings of Barbie based on Mattel's iconic doll revealed that the movie has a strong pro-feminist slant with a character played by a trans actor, Hari Neff, a man who identifies as a woman. Movie Guide previously reported, quote, they had a built-in market and audience for this franchise and they completely ignored Millions of families would have turned out to the theaters and purchased tickets, but instead Mattel chose to cater to a small percentage of the population who has proven over and over to abandon the box office. Movie Guide's 40 years of research indicates that it just isn't true and Mattel has made a grievous mistake. So this is very concerning. Of course, they're pushing trans ideology, lesbian ideology, gay ideology. They have they have feminist ideology, anti-man ideology, all shoved into this movie just to market to your daughters. Very concerning. Now, I was uh, brought to, it was uh, brought to my attention this clip from um, that they posted about a song that they're putting into the movie about Ken. Now, everybody knows Ken, Barbie and Ken, and this very, very concerning to me, considering that uh, of how inappropriate this song is and the message it sends. So we're going to play the audio, but we're not going to play the video because the video is not appropriate and I just can't can't show it to you. Um, I don't in good conscience. If you want to go see it, uh, look it up and you can find it easily. Uh, but I don't want to share the uh, the actual footage itself, but we'll play the audio for a second here. I just don't know who I am without you. You're Ken. But it's Barbie and Ken. There is no just Ken. Anywhere else I'd be Ken. Is it my destiny? Okay, to we'll cut it down. The uh, so this is uh it's very concerning because one, it shows like, okay, um women don't need men. And this is kind of the mentality of the movie. In fact, the one of the scenes in the movie apparently has uh, the people show up in Barbie land and the, uh, the the women all talk about how they got rid of the men there and everything is so much better now. They got no men, no problems. And these kind of uh, this is very echoing the, uh, the feminist mantra of a, a woman needs a man like a man needs a bi or like a fish needs a bicycle. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's very hilarious. And the, the other thing is it rejects this idea of, um, of politeness, of goodness. It, it, it raises Ken as the ideal man and the simp who is just desiring after her, after desiring after Barbie. And it shows how he is just like, oh, he's depressed and like this and it's so bad. He says, I've been so polite. And it's saying, oh, but it shows 
why is he being polite? Why is he being a good guy? Not because he's a good guy. It's because he wants to get with Barbie. He's not actually just a good person. So he's like, I've been so polite. I've been like, it's kind of like the classic nice guy. I've been so nice. Why don't I get something in, in response for that? It's like, because you don't deserve it. Where's my hug? Where's my hug? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's like, no, you are a good person. You are a virtuous person because virtue is good, not because you get something out of it. And this is the idea that it's showing. And so what happens in the movie? Well, apparently Ken is the villain of the movie. <laughs> And he is just annoying Barbie the whole movie, and Barbie is trying to get away from him. Hmm. And I'm just thinking, <laughs> this is absurd. So I start looking into to Barbie because I don't really know anything about Barbie. And I was like, okay, so there's a deep Barbie lore. Exactly. So apparently there is. <laughs> no uh, <way>. there, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> apparently there is. And I was thinking, okay, so is Barbie? So they're corrupting Barbie. They're ruining Barbie, right? Was it? Nope. It's always, always been pure. bad. It's yeah, always been bad exactly. from the beginning. And I was thinking, okay, this is crazy. So I looked into it. The founder of it made it specifically as a uh, girl boss to try to push mm. the feminist movement. Like, oh, Barbie can be anything. She can be a astronaut, a president, a this, a that, trying to push women. This is like in the 50s, um, pushing this idea of feminism early, early on. And then what do we see? In 1961, they brought in her boyfriend, Ken. And in 1962, what happens? The pair moved into their very own dream house. Mm. They're living together. They're the boyfriend married. and girlfriend, unmarried, living together. And in the clip that I didn't want to show the video of, Ken is shirtless and he's, sleep and he's in Barbie's bed when Barbie's not there and he starts singing the song. This sounds like something out of California. Yeah, right. Exactly. It's like <laughs> classic Malibu culture, right? And it's so bad. It's so bad. And this is the idea that they're trying to push on our daughters. Okay. They're trying to show this and say, this is a normal relationship. Listen, I have a two-year-old daughter. Okay. And her birthday's coming up. I thought it was tomorrow, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shattered because everything that we do Everything she's watching, she's observing. So if you're thinking about taking your kids to something like this, it's of course, it looks fun on the surface. You're looking at the trailers. Wow, that's cool. Barbie. I grew up with Barbie. I didn't know anything about you know, the, the lore, the back lore or anything like that about it. I just thought it was fun. It's dolls, you know, like I'm going to take my kids there. Look, your kids are so impressionable. And I know this from experience. Two year old daughter. She observes everything that we do. I would be very cautious taking your kids to see a movie like this because kids are so impressionable that they're going to pick something up about this movie. Maybe it's even something as, uh, you know, as unacceptable as maybe getting together with somebody without being married. Uh, if this is something that they're showing your kids in the movie, this is definitely something to avoid. Not to mention the sexualization of our daughters. Like, yeah. why does... Why do young girls need to see shirtless men with abs? Yeah. Like that's uh, obviously they're first of all, they're sexualizing men, which is what they complain that men are doing to women. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing is why do little girls need to see shirtless Ken in Barbie's bed? That is very, very yeah. disturbing. Now it's interesting though, because in 1962, the pair move in together in 24 in 2004, there was a massive uh, Barbie celebrity uh, breakup where Barbie and Ken move, uh, break up and Ken moves out of Barbie's dream house. Hmm. And it's like, oh, well, the house always belonged to Barbie. So Ken received nothing and Barbie <laughs> kept everything. And it's like, but they were just dating. And this is like, it's kind of funny because How it shows you the dating at that time. <laughs> <laughs> dating, right? 1961 to <laughs> It's uh, really crazy. But as of 2023, no yeah, no kids. Uh, as of 2023 though, they have had a transgender Barbie. Mm. They've had a drag Barbie. They've mm. had a sorceress Barbie, which I didn't wow. even recognize. I didn't know that happened. And many, many other things. And so it's very clear that they are attacking, they're attacking the norms. Now, if you're still not convinced, here are some things from the movie that this, uh, this Christian, this Protestant uh, movie review had pointed out. They said here that they have uh, little girls are smack their baby dolls in the movie and say, girls don't have to be mothers anymore. Wow. Another thing here is that another attack on the patriarchy, a Barbieville is good because they remove the men and the women are now in charge. And if you remove the men, you get rid of the problems. Another thing is Ken is a villain and Barbie hates Ken in the movie. A Barbie's 
Simu Lu says that the movie will be a final nail for gender based norms. I was like, there you go, folks. That's there ambitious. You go. <laughs> right. It, it's obviously not true. because it, it will never succeed in doing that. But that's obviously their stated goal. And the uh, and here's the last thing. Here's the last thing on this issue. And there's much more that could be said. But here's the last thing in this issue. Neff, if you remember, Neff is the man who identifies as a woman who is one of the characters in the movie. Um, I don't know if that's his real name or not, but he is playing a woman in this movie. There's a transgender actor in this movie, just trying to make that clear. And this man, he said, quote, it's candy with a little poison. And that's what I like. End mm. quote. He says the quiet part out loud. Whenever your enemy tells you what they're going to do, maybe you should believe him. It's a little candy with a, with a candy with a little poison. Now, I make this point all the time. If you have a cake and someone says, I just put like 1% arsenic in the cake and it's no big deal. And they hand you the cake. Would you eat it? Would you eat it? I wouldn't. If they hand you a glass of water and like, there's a little bit of, there's like 1% arsenic in there. Uh, would you drink the water? Would you drink the water? If you have a movie that is sunshine and rainbows and candy and cotton candy, it's, it's a delicious movie. But it, uh, lace it with poison, though. Are you going to give that to your kids? They're telling you this movie is poison. They're, te they're literally telling you. No. You don't have to listen to me. Listen to the people that are doing the movie. They're telling you this movie is poison. Now, are you going to go watch it? Are you going to support it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, people might. God despises the proud. And these, these people are so proud about what they do. They put it out there. They've just, as you said, right in your face. They, they say the quiet thing out loud. God despises the proud. And what have we seen recently? Money really talks. So you vote with your feet. So make sure that you avoid this movie and show them how brazen and how foolish they are. Take your, your kids elsewhere. Maybe not even to the movies. I can't imagine taking my kids to the movies these days, but vote with your feet and let this movie tank kind of like star yeah. wars did there you go yeah the more that we have these things the more we can vote with our our feet and i think that's a great opportunity it's a great opportunity to show people that we are fed up with hollywood culture we're done with it the malibu we culture hates it. we hates it <laughs> <laughs> and no more no mas no mas so let's stand up and defend our children and defend the sexualization of our children. We don't want that happening. No more. God's children are not for sale. And neither are these tickets either. We'll be right back with more after this.